Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are talking about the five essential photography composition techniques that you first need to know if you're looking to level up what it is that you create in both photo and video. Let's jump on into it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brock Wonder. I am a Toronto based content creator and social media strategist who happens to love street photography. So this video is going to be just showcasing some of my street photography as examples to the composition techniques. Personally, I was inspired to make this video because I got a few questions talking about my recent street photography POV that came out a couple weeks ago. And I wanted to really just dive a little bit deeper into what it is that I'm thinking about while I'm out taking to the streets. So without prolonging this intro any longer. Let's start with composition rule number one, the rule of thirds. And what the rule of thirds actually is, is when we basically take our frame of reference. So what it is that we're framing up, whether it's our subject or just landscape composition, and essentially divide that into nine separate squares, four individual lines. We essentially want to make sure that of the intersection points of these lines, we can put our subject on any of these points of intersection. For whatever reason, I'm not really a psychologist, but our minds are naturally attracted to these four points when we look at an image. Pretty much every camera nowadays, even if it's a phone camera, has a option to put grid lines on the back of your screen. So use them because they will be your friend and you will step up your photos as a result of using them. There are of course ways to get around the rule of thirds. So the first one is to center weight your subjects with social media. This is a very popular technique to do. It's not generally advised for any photography outside of social media, but if you have your subject fitting right in the middle of your frame, it generally <laughs> leads to a boost of engagement on platforms like Instagram or Twitter. The second way you can go against the rule of thirds is to fill the frame with your subject. So instead of always aligning your subject on a specific point of the rule of thirds, go super close up to your subject and find a focal point of that subject that can align to the rule of thirds and fill the frame with it as a result. And that will also lead to an interesting photo. Finally, don't be afraid to experiment, take multiple shots and find different points of the rule of thirds that you want to actually put your subject on, or even just try random ideas that you might have. So get the rule of thirds, you know, you nailed the shot and then try something else to just experiment and develop yourself creatively. Photography tip composition number two, layering is the concept that in photography, we have three different aspects to our images. Number one is the foreground. Number two is the mid ground. And number three, of course, is the background. Layering takes advantage of all three of these to essentially guide our eye through the photo and lead to telling a more comprehensive story and generally leading to a more interesting photo. The tip you'll hear often is to fill your foregrounds with something that is visually interesting, and this will help lead to intrigue and boost the reception towards your photos. And there are four ways that you can actually lead layering in your photos to make them more interesting. The first one is to use objects as layers in your composition. So maybe you have a flower that's blocking the foreground, your subjects in the mid ground, and then you have a beautiful landscape or some city composition in the background that's taking advantage of objects, incorporating movements as a layer in composition. So maybe you're taking a panning shot and you want to have the people that are actually moving in your photo, or maybe it's the background that's moving. And that's just adding another layer of interest to your photography or video. Number three is to create scenes within a scene. Let's say you're taking a photo of a musical composition. You can then use the separate scenes of like a musical instrument being played in the foreground to another musical instrument being played in the background, or you're just kind of creating layers of depth by similar things happening because there could be another photo in a separate scene that you're not really focusing on in this time, but you're using that like opportunity of the second photo to make your photo more interesting. And number four is of course, using people as layers and compositions. Photography composition tip number three, this is to not be afraid to crop. I can't tell you how often it is that I actually take a photo that I think is too wide and I end up really punching in on my photo and ending up with another photo that I didn't think I actually would get as a end result. Even with cameras such as the Sony a7S III, Lightroom's new pixel enhancing feature will allow you to crop farther into your photos than you actually thought possible. So if you're a little too far away from your subject and you think there's not a photo there, my advice and in my experience is take the photo anyway, you can always crop in afterwards and get the composition that you actually want or discover a new composition that you didn't initially think possible. So then tip number four is 
balance. And this one is about filling potential gaps in your photos or really just using symmetry, taking advantage of asymmetry and just really leading to a more cohesive photo that's pleasing to the eye. So for example, you might have a photo like this one where I'm shooting down the street to Old City Hall. I now have an asymmetrical city point, but the, na the nature of the composition is well composed so that it appears symmetrical, but it's actually asymmetric and all parts of the frame are filled. Additionally, you might take another photo where you have an opportunity to have somebody walking through your frame and you center them perfectly as they're taking a mid step. You now have a balanced composition given the placement of your subject and how the background interacts with that subject. But the interesting thing about balance is that you can also include other opportunities of framing. And one that we won't go too in depth in in this video is something called external framing. And I use this a lot. I often call it sub framing. The final composition technique is something that I use all the time and it is leading lines. You'll see me capture this with subway cars. You'll see me capture this in my architecture photography and I absolutely love everything to do with leading lines. The trick with leading lines is to find lines that are occurring naturally in our environments that we are photographing that naturally guide our eye towards our subject or lead to interesting elements of the photo, create reoccurring patterns or really just do anything that allows for some more visual intrigue in our photography. So so with that, I hope you found these quick five rapid fire tips useful to you. If you did, please comment down below. Let me know which tips you'd like me to go more in depth in. And if you are curious about my photography, feel free to subscribe for more photo videos or more tips around productivity and overall wellness, learning more about what we call on this channel, the habits for wealth, health, and creativity. That is what I am most passionate about. And of course, you can also follow along on Instagram for any updates at Brock Wonder pretty much on every social channel. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.